I plead the blood of Jesus over this live stream. <laughs> Shanda raka se raba ba shande vara kariando so raba ka rikande she ariande ea arakande ve zizi sharikando so raba karabande. I wonder if my phone has enough of a charge on it to um to do it. Let's see. To do a headset. You said you're you're still in bed. Hopefully you're feeling a little better. I'm gonna send you an invite. If you feel like coming on, just hop on. If you, if you wanna talk for a little bit, I'd love to. Maybe someone will hear your testimony and then they'll wanna get deliverance too from demons because there's people that, that need deliverance really bad and hopefully they have a thousand followers and they can hop on here. Exactly, no, I've been in bed this whole time. Yeah. Just resting and taking it easy. Are you feeling at peace, though? Do you have some peace and some rest? Yeah, I'm feeling at peace. Um, my stomach pain came back, so I'm just thinking, well, did I catch a little bug, maybe? Well, <clears throat> maybe I caught a little bug. It's hard to say. When I had, when I had to, went to deliverance personally, firsthand, um, I had been vomiting. I had number one and number two really bad, yeah. and I thought yes. I was sick. I actually had more demons that hadn't came out yet. I thought I had a cold. Yeah, because I've been going, I've been doing both, like number two also yep. a lot, yep. a lot. And so that can do it too. Yep. Absolutely. I haven't been off the toilet besides yep. bed and toilet. <laughs> That's how it was with me. I'm here to, I'm telling you, that I'm speaking from experience that when I was going through deliverance, I was vomiting number two, um, it was a lot. So it like isn't. A, it's yeah. It's not stomach flu then. Probably no. I don't. I don't think so. so I don't uh, believe in coincidences, especially if you're having, you're considering the demons that have been coming out of you and the deliverance. Definitely not. I wouldn't consider it. A, I mean, you know, I'm only human. You know, I'm, I'm just a spirit filled Christian. But I, I'm telling you, my discernment tells me that with the deliverance you've been going through. There's several different ways that these demons can leave your body, and they can definitely leave your burping, vomiting, coughing. Some people just start yawning, excessive yawning, which is the easiest way, in my opinion, is yawning. Yeah. Yeah. No, they've been coming out. They've been coming out, all right, because if I haven't been in bed, I've been on the toilet. <laughs> it's, well, not it, it's not been fun. It's not been fun. I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. I mean, it, I'm glad they're coming out. I just... You feel, ugh, you just feel, you know, yeah. Yeah. They're, um, yeah. Yeah. They're, so there are people that have oppression. So I, I've talked to a, a, a couple people today and there was nothing there. There was nothing demonic there. But so I, I do feel led to share this, like for whoever's listening, it's entirely possible for someone to have health issues in your life or, some type of something going on and it not be a demon, but at the very same time, it very likely can be a demon. The only way to find out is to go through deliverance it is you're going to find out if there's a demon there very quickly. Uh, when someone starts praying for you and commanding these demons to come out, they are, are going to manifest. And so a lot of people in the comments I was reading about earlier, I kind of was skimming them and people, there was a woman that said she was having nosebleeds when we were praying I actually went back and talked to one of my friends that does deliverance. He's been doing deliverance longer than I have. And he said, yep. He said, you'll see that. You'll see people have nosebleeds. Demons come out of their brain, come out through their cranial cavity. Some people get nosebleeds. Um, wow. So apparently, although very rare, if someone's been doing like devil worship or witchcraft long enough, they can actually apparently, there's people that have levitated during deliverance. Like, there's actually wow. people that have so many demons, they actually can levitate, like, hover off the ground. And from what I understand, that's how those, like, ma magicians or whatever, if, if they are actually doing a, a real levitation, I have actually heard of satanic people that can levitate. I've heard of it happening. And from what I understand, it's, it's demonic. I will say this. I, I have personally witnessed candles levitate across my home. My mother, who is here right now, watched it happen. And she can come on camera if I need to have her come on. Or she could tell you from the background. My mother's probably in the comments right now. My mother's a moderator in here. Actually, Kirsten, Kristen, I might make you a moderator. 
You, do you care if I put you as a moderator so you can mute people? Sure. Sometimes? No, I don't care. I don't right. care. Because I always need more moderators in here. Manage. Yeah. Right. So now, so now, if you see someone in here and they're uh, they come in here and they just want to, you know, slander or something, we're just gonna we, we mute or block people like that. If people are here and they're manifesting and they're like, "Hey, I'm shaking when you're praying," I don't mute those people. Even if people are in here have a demon speaking through them and I can see it in the chat, I really don't block and mute people unless they're directly coming against deliverance in some way or they're like worshiping the devil or something. Even then, it's kind of questionable. I kind of laugh when the devil worshipers come in here because it actually shows people like if someone's on the fence, if the deliverance is real or if it's for them, when you see devil worshipers in the comment and the witches and the warlocks that show up here, it's because they're attracted to the anointing. They know if someone is operating in the anointing of God, walking in their kingdom authority. So these witches and warlocks, you know, they come in and they start manifesting and then their demons leave. And so where they were attempting to derive their power from ends up leaving anyways. <laughs> right, right. So how long did your stomach pain last? Was it just a day or? So for me, it was the day. I remember the, I remember the day where all it felt like most of the rest of my demons came out. And okay. um, it was on a Friday night. I threw up really bad. Um, I felt relief, though. I felt light. I felt very, very light. And um, someone said, witches and warlocks. What is this, the 1600s? Well, you got the Freemason Society. They're still around today. 33rd degree Freemasons. I, They're doing witchcraft. Um, I can mute them. I, I'll yeah. mute them. It's up to so you. They you can, can still, mute them if they, you want. Still, then they can still hear. You can mute. <laughs> yeah, you can mute them. Use your discernment. However you feel is fine. There's tons of people tune in. I'm not worried about followers or anything. I just want people to get set free in Jesus' name. Um how long did it take for me to get better? So I, it was a Friday night. I vomited. I had to go onto the toilet a lot and I hadn't really ate. And that was the first time in a week that I could eat after these demons came out. And so I want to say that next Saturday, the very next day, I started feeling pretty recovered. I was pretty much feeling recovered. I'd say within a day. Okay. okay. Someone said there's, there, there's a guy who tells a story on witchcraft. Uh, John Ramirez has a good testimony. Have y'all heard of John Ramirez? Yes. Yeah. I like he was John the Ramirez. one that was satanic. He was really? satanic and got saved. Is that him? Oh, yeah. He's been wow. on Isaiah Saldivar's show. He's been on uh, Kevin Zadai also. He, uh, he's he got a, quite a testimony. He writes really good prayers, actually. I've, I have his prayers in my computer. Wow. Yeah. But... I'll tell you this though. So, so what the the prophetic word the Lord gave me after I went through my deliverance, because I was just kind of wondering for a long time, like why didn't everything come out all at one time? And what came to me was is that the Lord said to me, sometimes deliverance comes in waves of freedom. So, if you've had demons for twenty, thirty five years or however long and done drugs. Like I had drugs and stuff in my background. Some of these, there's, there were so many demonic spirits that came in to try to hijack my life that my body, I don't think could handle expelling all those demons at one time. Okay. So that's why it's probably been a process for me today. I'm still yawning. I'm still going to the bathroom. I'm still. <laughs> yeah. That, like I said, it's, um, that is, I believe it's, I believe that it's a gift from God's grace that it doesn't happen all at one time because our, because those demons are trying to destroy your body. They're, they're there to make us sick. They're there to try to make, there's people that have spirits of insanity on them. When, when people go to a sane asylums and mental hospitals, it's because they're hearing from demons. That, that they're schizophrenic and that is a demonic spirit. Yep. It sure is. I've cast those demons out of people before. And then, all of a sudden, the man on the, that lives under the bridge or lives under the fence behind the gas station, he's okay. He's not talking to shadows anymore and talking to invisible people. He's completely healed. Jesus healed the man. We, um, one of the first times I ever had deliverance happen was a man on the side of the road. And he was talking to invisible friends. And he told me, you know, I hear spirits talking to me. There's, there's demons, but the doctors call it schizophrenia. And I said, hey, can I just pray for you? I laid hands on him. The demons left, and he, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. As soon as I began to pray, he started speaking in tongues. He got saved right there. He was fine. All the demons well, left. I even, I even left and went home, got him a pillow, blanket, got him some dinner, 
brought it back to him and he was still fine. By the time I got done talking to that guy that night, we had prayed several times. There was like nothing more I could do for him. I don't even think there was anything else he even wanted. He was like, you've given me everything I need. Glory to God. The reason I share this is, is it's about the, the deliverance is, is the heal. It's part of people's testimonies. And so after God sets us free, you'll have such a powerful testimony that you can now go tell people, Hey, you know, I had demons and didn't even know it. And they came out. I got sick. I was throwing them up. I was having them come out in the bathroom. This is a very real thing because not enough people in the church know about deliverance. No, it is a very real thing. And what I experienced today was very real. Yeah. I didn't realize how many demons I really had. I did not think that I would have so many. Wow. And they fooled me. Remember the first time I talked to you? My discernment hadn't shown me anything. I mean, I'm not saying I had been fasting or anything, but I wasn't hearing anything. What I believe in my heart, what it was, though, is, is for whatever reason, they weren't yet ready to come out. And, and, it, and really, it all has to do with God, because you got to remember, like, when I do deliverance on people, it's not me doing it. It's just me walking in Jesus's authority he's given me. So it's, it's Jesus doing the deliverance. It is the spirit of God doing it. That's why God gets all the glory. God gets all the credit. It's all, all that glorifies uh, God. And um, I just believe God sometimes is preparing people's hearts because a lot of people want deliverance, but then they're not prepared to renounce anything. And that's so important that people... See, did you notice the minute you began renouncing and praying and saying, okay, I renounce this, I renounce that, then all of them started really wanting to come out too. So you have to, you have to renounce things. Like whatever these demons came in through, if it was sexual sin, lust, drugs, perversion, any of those things, alcoholism, abuse, trauma, you have to start. So before people come to me and ask for deliverance, anyone listening to me that's going to come on here or wants to come on and get, get the demons cast out, start saying, saying, I renounce witchcraft in Jesus' name. I renounce pornography in Jesus' name. Start renouncing Freemasonry. I renounce Freemasonry. Whatever it could be that these demons have come into you, however they came in, that's pretty much how they're going to leave. So just start renouncing every sin you can think of you've ever committed, even if it's like sounds off the wall. If it's something you did 30 years ago, I would still confess it. There's power in confession. Well, one thing also that occurred to me after we were done talking is – I had someone, I thought it was legit and it was a couple months ago and I had just gotten that, my dog, he's new, a new dog. And I got an animal communicator because I thought, okay, I want him to communicate his needs and if he's happy and what he wants. So I hired this animal communicator and then I was really convicted about it after we hung up. And I thought, oh, I haven't even prayed over that yet. And that could be why he's seeing things too. I ended up paying an animal communicator to try to come and talk to him to, to talk to me. Well, that's like still reaching out to like a psychic medium. An animal communicator. I've never heard of that. I, yeah, I did. I paid her like 70 bucks for, to ask five questions to him and that he was supposed to be communicating back to me. What? Uh, yeah. And she yeah. wrote up a transcript and everything about supposedly what he wanted to tell me and if he was a happy dog or not happy. I mean, just all these things. And I then I got convicted about it. And I thought, oh, yeah. I bet I opened a door there, a too. A witch, probably a witch. See, pe see, a lot of witches hide behind stuff like that. Like, um, hey, I can read your palm for $10 or, or whatever they do. or They probably charge like 100 or more, I'm sure. And um, anyways... It's usually a witch. So if someone's a medium, a psychic, they hide witchcraft and it opens doors when we go and, and you do that. So, yeah, remember, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the story of Saul in the Bible. You should read the story of Saul in First uh, First Samuel, I think, chapter 15. Saul consulted with the medium and very bad things happened to Saul. He, he provided us an example of what not to do. We definitely should never, ever open doors like that. <laughs> so now I, I believe I'm going to repent of that now and yeah. I am going to let that go. But I also probably need to really pray over him yeah. that if anything came in through him because of that, I want it gone. Yes, I am in agreement with you on that. That uh, All right, so let's just pray right now. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we just uh, plead the blood of Jesus over her uh, Kristen's dog, Bo, uh, and over that home over the urn with the ashes. We plead the blood of Jesus over any potential witchcraft. We bind any satanic, demonic forces of darkness that have tried to come into that home. We command every unclean and wicked spirit to go right now from that home in Jesus' name. Go to arid and dry places. 
The blood of Jesus commands you to leave that house right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, yes. And I will lay hands on my dog, too, and pray the blood over him. Yes. I would definitely. Yeah, people are laughing about the animal communicator. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm reading about that right now. It's pretty funny. Someone said, well, wait, her ass seemed, is bad. She seemed... She seemed so legit, and I thought, okay, I'll just try it. Well, I didn't even realize how much that would open a door. Um, someone's asking, do we renounce negative things? You have to renounce sins. So if you have had premarital sex, you would say, I renounce fornication in Jesus' name. I renounce adultery in Jesus' name. If you've done drugs, renounce drugs in Jesus' name. If you've ever done witchcraft, renounce witchcraft in Jesus' name. Um, if you've ever spoke judgmental or curse words over someone. I would renounce curse words in Jesus' name and then command anything demonic. You actually have to tell your demons you want them to go. So before you come onto the show on this live or, or go to someone for deliverance, I would recommend for very first thing, seek Jesus Christ. Ask Jesus to deliver you. And if you need deliverance through like a, a person, a pastor, a Christian, ask the Lord to lead you to the right person to do deliverance and he will he could he very well could tell you to come on here or he could lead you to someone um but not all churches do deliverance not all churches nope. even acknowledge there's demons see there's a whole lot of theological problems there no they don't they don't teach on sin either or anything it's they want to tickle your ears yep first timothy four talks someone just that. asked someone just asked if ashes were demonic i don't know that they're demonic yeah, mm -hmm. I just don't know that I would feel good about having anything dead in my house. Anything that's deceased, dead, dying, passed away, where there could potentially be spirits that have latched onto someone. I just, if there's oh, a spirit geez. that could be attracted to that deceased relative, it could have been a familiar spirit assigned to your bloodline. I really don't know. Um, but okay. I just don't feel comfortable putting anything that's even other people's possessions. Like if someone was like, hey, Ashton, can I leave? my personal belongings in your home i would be very sketched out about that let me tell you why before i got delivered oh. i had a lot of witches in my life and i i before i was married i dated a girl that i didn't even know it that she was a witch but she she always would want to leave pictures at my place like can i put my picture here and i want your picture oh i need your picture in paper by the way i have a have a paper picture of you like why do you need a paper picture of me because they do demonic rituals over your photograph and they use their photograph as a, as a, as a link to astral project into your home when you're sleeping at night and do curses on you. Interesting. Wow. That's how they do witchcraft. That is how they do witchcraft. Now it, here's what I want to say. Witchcraft won't work on you. If you're an obedient child of God, if you're not living in sin, their witchcraft will not work. But if you're abusing drugs, looking at pornography, cursing, drinking, if you're if if you're doing anything listed in Galatians chapter 5, 18 through 20, any of those sinful behaviors that are the, the works of the flesh, that gives the devil permission to come into your home. Wow. You said you want to come into the box. All right. She wants to give her testimony. I'm going to bring her on. And um, okay. Please bring you in. All right, I'll bring you in. Follow. We're going to have testimony time. How do I? I got to send you the uh, D-O-A-K accept. All right. I'm going to bring her on. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. You got a testimony? I do, brother. This is amazing. Last night, we know as believers, right, guys? There is no coincidence. Correct. When 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 something is being spoken right now, what you're speaking last night, I just prayed about this. So let me just tell you guys really quick. I am a new widow. My husband passed away in January. We were only married two and a half months. You guys, we were only together five oh. months. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Mm, I'm but sorry. you know what? So God, sorry. God still, God still gains the glory. I'm still, I'm still going to point it back to the kingdom in every instance in our life. But what you just said, brother, about the ashes. Okay. So David, my deceased husband, right? Um, in our courtship, um, I did see, I did see a man who was striving, you know, in his faith and he was, he was, he was believing. Now 
at the time of his illness and his death, I realized he was very works-based. He was very works-based. He, he really, really was works-based with salvation. And he wanted to be cremated. And what you just said about keeping ashes in a home, let me tell you, ever since I cremated him, and I still walk through my home, and I still proclaim the word of the Lord in my home, I anoint my doors, that's, that's what I do, I believe this is biblical, I've read it, and let me tell you, having those ashes in that home, for some reason, I have felt uneasy, my spirit has felt uneasy, and I've already decided I'm going to give them because his family member, one of his family members wants them. And she is not a believer at all. She has oh. no faith in the Lord. She's she's self-professed atheist. And she feels that she, you know, she had told me when he passed away that she wanted a lot of his possessions, which I thought was kind of creepy. OK, because, yeah. again, like you said, brother, we have to be very careful. Yeah. with what we allow. And when he passed away, I found a lot of collections that he had. And even though he told me he was born again, remember, we weren't living together before marriage. Mm -hmm. So I, I had no business going through his belongings during our courtship, right? So at our marriage, there were still things I didn't see. Because remember, we were only married two months and then he got ill and passed away 13 days later. Wow. So now I'm going through all his possessions and I found all these really weird masks, okay? Very creepy, very scary, and I had this uneasiness the whole night, and I, I got up out of bed, and I packed every single one of those masks in separate bags and then in big bags, and I proclaimed the word of the Lord over my home, over, you know, protection in my life, and over anyone who steps into my home, and I throw all that away, but the ashes, I wondered why I still felt this uneasiness, but you know what you just said about the ashes? Mm -hmm. Someone also told me, multiple people actually, even even those who profess to be believers, said you should make those ashes into a crystal stone and wear it around your neck. And I'm going, oh, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. no, no. I Not already knew that. that, right? Okay, no. so now you just helped me come to this 100% conclusion, brother. I am getting rid of the ashes. Wow. I'm getting rid of them. Too. I do not feel, I do not feel that anyway, the spirit is alive. That's just the body. He has not gotten a glorified body yet. I'm just getting rid of them. I, I'm just, I, 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 I have an uneasiness. And it's funny because I have not been staying in that house since he's passed away. I come and I go a lot. I visit family. I stay, you know, with my family who I know are believers in their home. Because what you're saying, brother, is so spot on. Do you know I met a woman? She cuts hair. And I met her one time. And she's a true believer. We sat there. We spoke. And she told me. Even be careful where you go to get your hair cut because people wow. will use your hair clippings for rituals. Wow. I you have to be that. really careful. You have to be really, it's kind of makes me think of when we go to the hospital, we go to the doctor, we give our blood, we, mm -hmm. they, they take your organs out in a surgery or they, they keep your skin. They, these kinds of things, like the devil is real. Oh, he is. These, these things are real. And you just confirmed that in me this morning, yeah. brother. I'm, I'm, when I Glory go back home next week, yeah, praise God, because I had been feeling this and, and I didn't want to look like that widow that's like, she's just getting rid of everything. You know, she doesn't even want to remember him, but that's not the case. I um, know the uneasiness I feel in that home. There isn't, an, and I know the spirit is not, the Holy Spirit doesn't give us an uneasy feeling. That's correct. No, I have an uneasiness too. And so I'm going to call my brother up who him and I really don't talk, but I'm going to walk in forgiveness and forgive him anyway. And I'm going to yeah. ask him to pick him up because I'm pretty sure he, he has, he already has his own urn. So he can have two of them, but I have such an uneasiness yeah. about it too. Yeah, I agree. Sister. I don't like someone it. just I asked me, someone yeah. just, yeah, I, I agree, sister. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, but someone's saying, no. what's my testimony? So my testimony is, is that, Christy. My testimony is I got married in October of last year on the 29th. Um, I said I was with him for six weeks altogether. Uh, we were, we were together four and a half months. Um, in September, in, in December, I remember the date, December 20th, we both got COVID. He was high risk because he had, um, issues with his lungs from being in the military in Kuwait when they were burning oil. And it gave his lungs, you know, a really, that was a COPD. And he didn't even have symptoms of COPD. It wasn't major. But we all know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And David was fighting for his life. 
And like uh, I said, we had eloped. We had eloped and we planned a marriage for October of this year to get married at a place in San Diego. And, you know, I'm living for the Lord, you know, end of story. And David, he, he was a believer, but he was very works based. I could see it, you know, more and more as he was um, ill. And he would say things that are not biblical in, 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 in a sense. None of us are perfect, right? We're all learning every day. But um, my testimony is this, that most people expected to see me give up on God. They expected to see me get angry with God because I waited seven years. I was divorced from a long-term marriage. He was an adulterer. He did not want to leave that lifestyle. And we divorced. And I waited seven years. And um, I met David and we got married and, you know, I tried my best and he did as well to live a biblical life before marriage, you know, abstinence and not living together. And let me tell you guys, when, when, the, when the scripture says that in your weakness, there is made perfect strength. Mm. It is so true, you guys, because I had to walk that ICU unit for 13 days straight. And I had no no real support with me because my family lives out of town and his mother was elderly and and think about it. I'm a new I'm a new wife and I'm already watching this person, you know, fighting for their life on life support. The amount that I I did not have the strength and I truly and I thought I knew what it meant to call on the Lord for for that upholding you. And I thought I knew what scripture meant when it said God will bind up your wounds and he heals a broken hearted. You don't really understand that fully till you are that broken hearted till you are that weak in your own strength and you are so dependent no amount of phone calls from people could give me the strength I needed. But the minute I would literally get on my knees in the ICU upstairs on the second floor in the waiting room before I walked down that corridor to go into his room. And I would say, God, please, I cannot do this. Please put the Holy Spirit on me right now. I'm, I'm having trouble even breathing myself in those moments. I'm having trouble even thinking correctly, you know, profusely sweating. And then this feeling would just come over me. The Holy Spirit would just give me that strength I needed to stand up, walk down that corridor, and in those moments even be able to speak to other family members that were watching their family members on life support to share the good news with them. Because in those moments, you know, you, you have to you have to remove yourself from your own situation sometimes, right? You yeah. have to like look at those around you that are struggling too. And you're like, do they know the Lord? Do they know how good God is? Do they know that everyone's going to tell them, I know he's going to come home and he Amen. might not, Amen. he might That's not good. come home because God's will has to be done. Not our will, but God's will. And that was a hard, a hard pill for me to swallow Amen. too. You know, I wanted David to come home. And every day I prayed and said, God, I know you can bring him home. And that's the difference. My testimony to people right now has been, can God do a miracle? Of course he's God. But God doesn't always do it the way we want him to do it. God is capable and he's able, but it has to be his will. And he's willing. But again, I have to. I had to come to that realization. And now my testimony to people is, you know, stay in your faith, believe on the Lord. Do not shrink back. Do not let yeah. circumstances in life because you're going to get hit with so many circumstances and it's going to scare you. Like, why is this happening to me? Why now? You know, I just, I waited seven years, God. You brought someone into my life. Why now? But again, Amen. David's destiny is not my destiny. Wow, why it happened good. the way it happened? It up. Yeah. Amen. Why Why it happened that way? I don't know, but I do know this. David told me every day. I prayed every day for a wife to know what it was like for a woman to love me, respect me, and, and be there with me to pray in my hard times and, and be by my side every day. And, and God fulfilled that for me. This is what he told me. Wow. So, wow. so God is that's good. between him and God, right? Yeah. If yeah. that happened, if I, I was brought into David's life to fulfill that through God's promise to David, so be it. God still wow. gains the glory. God still gains the glory. People who told me they never prayed before, they said, you know, Priscilla, that's my first name, by the way. They said, you know, Priscilla, I never really prayed for somebody in their family like that I knew as close as I do you. And then I realized I hadn't prayed in years or I hadn't opened my Bible until you opened your Bible on Facebook to pray for David. And we read along with you. And, and look, look at God working. Look at God bringing, making my circumstance, right? But he's yeah. using my circumstance to open up the truth to others around me. Praise God. 
Praise yeah, God, praise because wow, none should perish. A, wow, what a testimony. I mean, that is a testimony. And to be such a warrior like yourself, to come on and be so strong after losing your husband that quickly, yes, I mean, yes. that is tough things. Yes, yes, yes. And, and don't get me wrong. Of course I miss him. Of course I, I wanted a marriage. Of course I wanted those things. You know, and I don't I don't cry about it because I, I I'm angry or I'm sad about it. I'm actually really happy. Yeah. I'm really happy because God will always gain the glory in our lives. If we don't give God know. glory in our I in agree. our trials and in our sad times, and he's still the God on the, in the mountain, but he's also the God in the valley. How do you get to know God when you're in your valley? It's easy to know God when life is good and you're riding high and you're right. happy. Right. But God is still going to bring glory in your life. He's still going to bring other people into your life. And you have to stand strong so that those people see you. They don't, they're going to, they're going to know when I go through something, I will remember I watched her go through something and God still brought her through it. He will bring I, you through things. Yes. I have tears now just listening to your testimony. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. wow. It's powerful. I feel it. Keep if, you, if you only knew, if you if you people only really knew, yes, we we struggle. Okay, as a widow, trust me, I never imagined at this point in my life I would be sitting here thinking, "Wow, I got married. I had what I thought was the, the life I was supposed to have, and it just it's, it got taken away." But what did God? What did God show me? What did He? He's so more, much more revealed to me than ever before, ever. Be. And if wow. it takes, if it takes a trial after a trial to reveal Himself to you, that's what He's going to do. Look at Job. Yeah. Job oh had Job had the trial of a lifetime, right? He lost all his children. He lost his livelihood, and he had people coming to him, telling him, "Look at what God did. You should be mad with God." And Job is like, "Nope." I'm not. I'm going to still stand on God's word. That's, That's so that true. for me. That for me. Until until you live something and take it from me. No one wants to live through watching someone die. No one no, wants no, to live through that, no, right? No. But I want to no. live through watching how people live because we're all going to die. But we got to worry about how we're living. We have That's to worry about how we're living now. for the Lord, you know? That, that just that's my to testimony. Oh, that just <laughs> really spoke to me. How we're living for the Lord right now through our trials. That just that's really it. spoke to me. me that's too. it, sis. Me we're too. all going to die. You know, we're, we're, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die, but we're, we're going to. Yeah. We're all going to die, you know, and it's what we're doing in our in our waking hours right now with the, the, the air in our lungs and how we're we're seeing it and, you know, and how we're living it and, and is God being revealed through us to people because everyone around us is just watching us who claim to be believers, right? They're looking at us. They're like, hmm, is she really going to stand on it? Now she's really in a trial. They don't say it out loud. They don't even say it to each other. But we all have thought that when we've seen somebody in a trial that has professed Christ, right? We've thought yeah. it. Like, let's see if they drop. Let's see if they, they turn completely away from God. But you know what? If anything, a true believer in your heart, you're going to run so hard towards God that people yeah. around you, it's going to scare them. My, my own yeah. son sat there and looked at me and like, Mom, you know, when my husband, the, the hour he passed was at 3 p.m. And I walked down to the to the waiting area and my son is sitting there crying and he's looking at me and he's waiting for this reaction out of me. And he's like, Mom, how are you just, are you okay? And he didn't know, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know whether to hug me. And I smiled because why? Um, I said, David's spirit is more alive than his flesh. And the Bible says the spirit is, is absent from the body, is present with the present Lord. Lord. Like he, he went home. He yeah. went home. You know, how can I not be happy for someone who went home? He was just here, just like scripture says, we're just so journeying, right? Like we're not meant to be here forever. I got goosebumps just hearing your testimony. Right, though, sis? You know, yeah. it's so oh. true, though. God is so good, you guys. He's so, I mean, I, I don't know how I'm doing it, right? I don't know how I'm living. And, and keep in mind, I left Arizona I lived my whole life in California. Two years ago, I moved away to Arizona. I meet David. I come right back to California, leave my whole life behind, quit my career. I quit everything to marry him, you guys. Like everything you can imagine, I left. I gave things away and I left because I believe solely I'm supposed to marry this person. Now, fast forward, he passes away. I have to shut down his business. I have to sell the house I'm now living in. But guess what? 
God is still going to see me through it. God is still Ooh. upholding me. He's still going to uphold me. He's still going to use what was meant for bad for good because the enemy does all these things to try to trip us up. And he tries to bring people. I've had people that I've known for 20 years come into my life again at the passing of my husband and literally say, you finally find a man and he dies. I can't help but see the humor. I've had people say this to me. Oh, no. Because this is how the enemy works, works. right? He yeah. brings, he brings, he brings people you believe are going, to, are going to, are going to support you and be with you. But guess what? If they're not believers, they're going to be a puppet to the enemy. Yeah. And that's when the enemy yeah. wants to bring you and knock you off of your faith. That's what he wants. It's not going to work. Wow. It's not going to work. So someone in the comments asked how long I was married. I was only married for two and a half months. And the half of those time he was in the hospital on life support. Oh, and we were man. only together four and a half months. And I, and, and again, I waited seven years, you guys, you know, seven long, you know, hard years of being single in this world and trying to, trying to find, you know, myself with the Lord, let alone to have the Lord bring a man into my life, right? It, it's, okay, that's I'm already 40, a task in itself. <laughs> I'm 45 years old, and I've never been married, and I'm still waiting for my Boaz. I'm still waiting, and I ask yes. God, why are you not sending me somebody? You say, you say it's good for, it's not good for man to be alone. I'm 45 right. years old, Lord. Like, when are you going to send them? But then I right. just realized, today I even realized, like, well, he's had to refine me, and he's had to do some pruning Amen. and pruning and pruning. Amen. And then I really, truly believe that my Boaz will come. Sister, yeah. I've never been married. I never had kids, but I've had wrong relationships that were toxic and horrible and abusive. And I've been peer for two years now. Is it easy? No. Have I been tempted? Yes. Have I been approached? Yeah, I could go there right now. I just chose not to. I've been here for two years and I'm telling you, it does get lonely sometimes and I'm still waiting for my Boaz and I'm going to continue to be pure. Wow. Glory to God. My, my whole, my whole belief in, in the Lord that if, like I said, if I didn't have this trial, I would really, I would really be I wouldn't have no idea how strong my faith can, can be. I thought my faith, guys, I thought I was so solid and unmoved. But when I had this trial, let me tell you, I went from the happiest moments of my life, right? The happiest, like, oh, I'm a newlywed. We're married. We're planning a wedding. We paid for everything. We went and sat with the coordinators. We walked the whole thing. And then, boom, we get sick. And now he's in the hospital. And, I mean, you talk about a roller coaster, Okay. Like a roller coaster. Even when I had to go and cancel when he passed away and the ladies at the, at the, you know, wedding place are looking at me and they're going, what do you mean? Like you just paid for all this. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's almost, it's almost so surreal, right? It's so surreal. And you're just, I'm just standing there and I'm like, God, walk me through this. Yeah. <laughs> Help me. Give me the words. Give me the strength. And when, and when the power of the Lord, the Holy Spirit does work in your life, let me tell you guys, it, it, it's, I can't even describe it. I, I can't even describe it. I just, I just know that without God in my life, I would have been one of those women or men that you see when their spouse dies, they themselves become physically ill. They go into, you know, a depression, all these things happen to them, but that's because, at, and don't get me wrong, I was sad, of course, but to lose myself completely, nope, nope, because God nope. is good. Amen. God that is good true. and God upholds you. God upholds yeah. you. Those scriptures become your food completely. That's all I could live on. That's all I could, I could hold down was the scripture, was the word of God. And it, it becomes truly apparent to everybody around you. Everyone in my life started to see it and reach out to me. And I kept hearing the same things, which is, I don't know how you're doing this. And I just, God, God gets the glory. God, God, because I'm a mess in myself. But this is, this is God. This is how God takes care of us. And that's my testimony. I'm never going to change it. I'm never going to say, I wish God would have did things differently. God does things always for his children, for the good, for Amen. what good he is going to come from it. That is it. <laughs> You know, end that's, of story. <laughs> that's so good. Oh. That is so true. That's so good. I'm thinking that's about that good. right now. I used to be bedridden sick. And when I was so weak, when I would, I used to have to take like, I was on Adderall for 10 years and I quit Adderall. And then the doctors diagnosed me with late stage Lyme disease and I was bedridden. 
And I would have to take like when I quit the Adderall, my adrenaline glands just wouldn't even fire. So I started taking hydrocortisol, hydrocortisone, to make my adrenals fire. And I would like get out of bed and stand up and I would collapse to the floor and my blood pressure would be crazy. And I just remember like some of those mornings where I would be like laying in bed and I would feel the presence of God, but I didn't yet know it was the Holy Spirit I was feeling. I was wondering, I had never heard the voice of the Lord yet. This is like probably 20, 20, 2021 maybe. And I didn't really start getting a lot of prophetic words from the Lord until I went through deliverance, which was late last year. And after I received deliverance, now that's like all I want to do is help other people get delivered, which is the children's bread. Like literally, we are called to do what's in James 5.16, James 5.19, which is to lead the sinning believer back onto the narrow path, which that love we display covers a multitude of our of, of their yes. sins. According to James, yes. he restores the soul back to life from the dead. I just quoted James 5.19, part of it anyways. And um, I am so like, once you start casting the demons out of people, you're like, wow, Lord, you gave me the authority. Yeah. Thank you, yes. God. Like, I can yes. go set my neighbors free and glorify <laughs> you, Lord, at the same time. Amen. That's what I'm about doing. So now yes. I've got people stacking up in queue on my Facebook and on TikTok, private message. They're like, hey, I got to, you know, some people don't want to come on camera. And I'm like, all right, add me on Facebook. <laughs> There's been a couple people where they're like, you know, I've got sickness or something. Like they've, they've been sick a long time or they might have something going on in their life that they're just not quite sure if there's a demon or they're kind of questioning mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. I've gone to do deliverance on like a couple people and there's just nothing there. There is no demon. And then there's people that don't think they have a demon and then they do have a demon. Christy right. will tell you, she, right. the first time I spoke to her, I was like, oh, I don't, I'm not getting anything that you have a demon. And then today, a day later, in the name of Jesus, I was casting demons out of her all morning and she's been getting deliverance all day. And so she's going to be de delivering people. I believe in the near future because Kristen can come on TikTok once she's completely healed and set free. Whenever the Lord gives her the release, that prophetic word or whatever conf confirming it, that it's time to do deliverance. She'll be able to go live and be like, who wants the devil cast out of them? And you'll be able, any believer can Praise do this. God. Like I'm not Amen, God, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, praise God. You have the authority. I'm yep. excited and I you cannot know. wait till I'm totally delivered and free and I will be yeah. casting out demons out of people. You yeah. you bet I am. Praise God. You know, I was on a live yesterday and there was a man on there and, and just people in the comments and, and write this down if you need to. His name, he's on TikTok. His name is Acker Water Zero. He claims to be Jesus Christ right now living in the earth, right? He claims that we should be following him. Okay. Blasphemy, blasphemy. Scripture tells us if anyone on earth or even an angel comes preaching another gospel, let him be accursed, right? We are not living in that time right now. Christ has not returned. So the three men in the box and the host were actually entertaining this person. Nobody would, would rebuke it. Nobody would try to cast it out. And I, I'm, I'm getting this whole thing now from Christian TikTok where, yes, a lot of us are on here to share the gospel, but we have to be ready to go to spiritual battle. Just like you said, brother, you got to know when you got to cast things down now because we don't wrestle with the flesh. These principalities are real. These wicked place, things in high places are real. Why are they, Why are so many afraid when they see it? I mean, this man was literally admitting to be Christ. He was he was literally blaspheming in front of three men, and none of them casted it down. Well, I kept going in the box. I mean, I kept going in the comments saying, "Bring me in," because that's what I wanted to do. But they wouldn't bring me on. They um, they have to want deliverance. So, like, if someone wants to keep demons. Their demons have a right. That, that's another big thing. Like, I don't just walk up to people and cast their demons out. It, they have to want to be delivered. Like, there's for sure been people that I've encountered that, like, they're like, they say they want deliverance. But then when you start telling them they have to repent from their sins for these demons to have no more right to return, they're kind of like, oh, like, you know, it's just like you're, yeah. you're kind of wondering, like, do you want your demons to leave? And they're like, and they're like um yeah and you're like well, why are you even you know so yeah. some people i just i, I want to reiterate that there's a video on my tiktok of a, of a warlock that came in my neighborhood he has satan tattooed on his chest when this man speaks to you it's nothing but demons speaking to this man 
And someone on the comments on my Facebook was like, oh, it's easy. Just walk up to them and cast the demons out. Yeah, they'll, they'll have to go and they'll shut up. But those demons just return anyway, seven times more wicked and worse than the originals if that man doesn't repent and, 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 re and remove himself from a sinful lifestyle. And again, if people want to keep their demons, their demons don't have to go. You have to tell the demons you want them to go. That's why you have to yes. renounce and confess with your mouth that I renounce witchcraft. I renounce sexual sin. I renounce these things because if you just walk in there and try to cast their demons out, their demons are going to tell you they have a right. You can tell their right. spirits to step aside, but those spirits are going to say, I have a right to be here. Right. They'll tell you. Demons Very true, are, brother. You, yeah. If Very you go true. to do deliverance, the spirits, their demons will tell you why they're there. That's why if you do do deliverance on someone, just, just make sure you ask the spirit, why are you here? And then it'll say something like lust, pornography, a car accident, something, whatever they tell you. You just make sure you have the person renounce that in the name of Jesus and just bind the spirit right. and command it to go. And then it has no choice. It has to come up and come out. And some of them are stubborn. Some demons are stubborn. You just got to sit there and, and just be more stubborn than they are. If you're coming out, you're coming out. And sometimes they'll right. say, oh, I don't have to. Ask it why. Why do you not have to? And then it won't say anything because it's lying to you. Especially Spirit of Jezebel. She's especially wicked. Mm -hmm. Spirit of Jezebel comes in through sexual sin, lust, pornography, sex toys, whatever it is that people do, which is sexually immoral, immoral it invites that demon in. It says in Revelation chapter, um, oh man, I have to pull it up now. I, I, I don't want to quote the wrong scripture. Let me pull it up. Uh, but anyways, when people have been in a sick bed a long time, I start listening. I'm like, well, what kind of lifestyle have you lived? If they're like, well, you know, I was I was having a lot of immoral sex. I had a lot of sexual partners, and you end up on a sick bed with and doctors can't figure out what's wrong with you. I start thinking, uh, I'm like, okay, what kind of thoughts are you having? And then you end up finding out. You go to take them into deliverance, Spirit of Jezebel. And and by the way, I've found uh, that Spirit of Jezebel wow. wants to hide. Usually, she'll try to let other demons under her manifest, like greed or lust or uh temptation or, or or pain or worry or fear but ultimately that's not the strong man you have to get and find out who the strong man is you have to command whatever demon you're speaking to ask it are you the strong man in this house and then you have to bind that spirit in the name of jesus it'll it has to tell you because you're bringing it before the lord all right let's see um let's fix this problem Boop. bye bye um okay yeah, bye bye, yeah, bye, -bye. So let's see, uh, Revelation 3, I just want to make sure, oh, it's Revelation 2, I'm sorry, I was starting to uh, mess that up, Revelation 2, verse 20, Jesus' own words said, but I have this against you, you are forgiving that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and is seducing my loving servants, she is teaching that it is permissible to indulge in sexual immorality, and then it goes on to talk about eating food sacrificed to idols, he says, I have waited for her to repent from her vile immorality, but she willing, willingly refuses to do so. Now I will lay her low with terrible distress along with all her adulterous partners if they do not repent. That's why people get sick. That's why a lot of people die early. If you see you these 19-year-olds in bed, bedridden with, with undiagnosable illnesses, there's a likely likeliness they have spirit of Jezebel. Go ahead. With, that with me being promiscuous and having um, the partners that I did and men and women and, you know, whoever I could sleep with, you know, I had fertility issues and I was never able to conceive a child. Yep. Um, and that could wow. be why too, right? For sure. As yeah. a matter of fact, there's a guy on YouTube I watch sometimes to just pick up on how his, what he's doing for deliverance. His name, he has a, a ministry called Invicta Ministries. They're in Miami. Just found him the other day on YouTube, but I've been listening and watching him cast demons out. When Jezebel's in there and it's a woman, he then tells Jezebel to remove any tentacles, anything off of the woman's sexual organs because spirit of Jezebel is, makes people infertile. It affects your, your reproductive organs with men mm. and women because it's a sexual wow. sin. It's a very specific mm. type of sin. Mm. And there yep. is scripture that says sexual sin. I think Paul said it, that, uh, Sexual morality, uh, I want to say it's in 1 Corinthians uh, 5 or 6. I'll find it later. And he's, uh, but that's when he, have you ever heard the story where Paul handed, handed the man in the church over to Satan? 
for he he hands someone from the church. He says he said hand that one over to Satan. Kevin Zadai talks about this too. Oh. So there's a man in their church in the early church in the book of Acts and in, and in First Corinthians I think five or six. Paul hands someone from the church over to Satan because he's committing se- sexual morality. And you're, if you're wondering why did he hand someone out of the church to Satan, he said, so Satan, for the destruction of his flesh, that his soul might later be saved. So mm. literally it says... This is one of the saved. epistles to one of the seven churches? It's the Corinthian that, church. Yeah, it's to the Corinthian that. church. Yeah, when, Corinthian, he's talking about yeah. The, when he's talking about... Um, and you, he's telling that church that there's much fornication going yep. on. And he's saying, you will, you'll judge those on the outside committing fornication, but what about those on the inside? That and he's too. saying to get rid of them because the leaven, right? The leaven we have to get rid of. A little leaven, leaven at the yes, whole So exactly. what happens though also is I think it was in 1 Corinthians 6 or 7, Paul lets the man back into the church. So the point is, in, Vic, in Victor, Georgia, it's called Invicta Ministries. If you go to YouTube and just search Deliverance Ministry on YouTube, it says Invicta, I-N-V-I-C-T-A, Invicta Ministries. He's in Miami. You can't miss it. He's the only okay. other guy on YouTube that you'll find on Deliverance Ministry, except for like Isaiah Saldivar and, and Vlad Savchuk and a couple other people. I don't even think Vlad Savchuk, I don't know if he does Deliverance or not. I don't think, well, what I'm gonna, I think it's Isaiah. Yeah, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna be able to tell people now is, you know, the reason I could never have a child because it was a sin problem. My sin problem caused me to not bear a child. You know, it caused fertility, infertility. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry, sis. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I always wanted to be a mom and then I couldn't, so and now I know why. It was a sin problem. Spirit, it was the spirit behind it. And uh, this is the, see, here's the reason why I get on here and preach against the hyper grace false message. You hear these mega churches that teach, like, you know, you can do anything. God loves you. Right. No how right. much you sin. Right. And it's like, yes, that is technically true, but sin has consequences. And the word of God teaches to repent, come out from among them, and be ye separate. And what I've found is there's a lot of religious spirits in people, and they actually will try to use the word of God to defend living a sinful lifestyle. No, I'm not talking about prosperity preachers. There's nothing wrong with prosperity. It's this when people don't talk about hell is very real. There's nothing wrong with having money for the record. How can I feed the poor if I have nothing? So I have to have money to feed the poor and to to build an orphanage. So God's going to give me great wealth to do amazing things for the kingdom of God. I just want to make that clear, you guys. When I'm, when Amen. I'm wealthy, Amen. I'm God will bless you to I'm bless others. It was because God blessed me. I'm going to be the first one to testify to God's goodness. However, I won't be the man living in a sinful nature. I, be- I have to become dead to sin. And people will take the gospel and corrupt it and pollute it into perverting God's grace as an excuse to sin. The book of Jude talks about that. It talks about the fate of apostates that actually teach the word of God because they love money and have gone the way of the, the era of Balaam. So if someone's just preaching money to be famous and make money and they don't talk about uh-huh. sin and hell and conviction and, and the Holy Spirit, uh, you need to hear from the Holy Spirit. You better, you better know Jesus Christ. Does Jesus know you? I preach sermons like that. Does uh-huh. Jesus know you? Like, are you born again from above? Because you have to be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. Basically, it comes down to this. I want to make sure that I'm accountable to God and not just accountable to man. Because I don't care what man says. I care about what the word of God says. And I, I can care less what, if people like me or not. I've lost a lot of friends on Facebook. The minute I yep. started talking about sin, godliness, true humility, yep. walking in repentance, walking in holiness, people would attack me. You'll never be holy. You mean holy. Be holy as I am holy. Well, that's a big problem. Actually, no, it's not, guys, because Jesus spoke to me. I've met Jesus Christ. He told me, come out and separate yourselves. He said, consecrate yourself. The Holy Spirit said, consecrate yourself. You're going to be separate because you belong to me, says the Lord. He said that to me. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what does that look like? And, And the Lord took away a whole group of people I used to hang out with. I lost a lot of friends and it was a blessing because those very same people now, now that I've been pulled aside and I'm, I'm apart when I see what I preach and I'm like, what, what is going on? And the Lord's like, I'm using you to lead by example. 
you're a plumb line for a generation around you. And that's true for everybody here that, that hears me. We all have a call in our lives to obey the word of God. Yes, yes. And when I was boasting about what happened to me this morning in the deliverance, I was boasting about it with another, I went on another live and I was just kind of giving God the glory about what happened. And this, I won't say a name, but this person says, you know, that deliverance is a bunch of baloney and we don't need to go through it. And it's, you know, we don't have the power to trample over serpents and all this. And I said, yeah, wait, wait a minute. Yes, we do. The Bible says it right here. It's clear, Oops, but they're against it. They're, they're totally, we're against deliverance and says it's phony and all this. And they're Christians Are and they? they were Christians supposedly she's a christian supposedly and she's saying there's no such thing as deliverance and you shouldn't have to do it i'm like and that you can't manifest and i said well if you can't manifest i said then what happened to me this morning because i sure did so oh boy in second <laughs> timothy chapter three this is gonna now this is about to connect some dots for you this is gonna like <laughs> blow the lid what, what i'm about to say you're gonna be like whoa in second timothy chapter three verse five Paul describes religious people. He said, there are those that have a form of religion, a form of godliness that deny the power of God from such people turn away. Yeah. And this person was a psychic and got set free and became a Christian and no longer lives as a psychic, but says deliverance is baloney. Okay. The Bible it's not. says deliverance is it's... children's bread. It says yeah, in Proverbs 22, verse 5, a wicked life will be surrounded by the demonic. Or excuse me, it does not say that. Let me correct myself. Thank you, Lord. A perverse life is surrounded by the demonic. If you value your soul, stay far from it. What that tells us is, is the Bible. Who was the Bible written to? People who believe in Jesus. In James chapter 2, it says even the devils believe in Jesus. Yeah, no, I knew it. I, I know there was no convincing this person. So I just jumped out of their life then. All I wanted to do was boast about God and what he did for me. Yeah. So, you know, here's what I do when I encounter. If I encounter the, what I believe and discern as, as a religious spirit, which is a, a cloud. Paul calls them clouds without rain. Because what did Jesus say in Mark 16, verse 17? He says, all who believe, that means believing believers. Kevin Zadai teaches on this. He says, there are such a thing as unbelieving believers. But it says, these signs and wonders shall follow those who are believing believers. They will cast out demons in the power of my name, and they will speak in new tongues. So if I encounter someone that's operating in a religious spirit, I can pray for that person. I pray for that person. But typically, like Kevin Zadai teaches, he says, I'm here for the sheep. I'm not here for the goats. Amen. See, Jesus Amen. Said, my sheep will hear my voice. Think about a sheep. A sheep, you can mm -hmm. take a yoke and put it on its neck. It's going to come with you. It hears its shepherd. It's going to obey. Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, you will obey me. Kevin Zadai is my mentor too, amen. I'm a student of Warrior Notes, by the way. So if anybody is feeling encouraged by anything I'm saying, you could definitely, uh, they have free courses online, Warrior Notes does. But anyways, back to the story. Kevin Zadai talks about goats. He's like, I'm not here for goats. He's like, I'm not giving up on anybody. But if someone's a goat, I'm not here for the goats. Goats are people that, what does a goat do? A goat will put its paws down or its hooves. It'll plant you try to put a yoke on a goat and lead it it's going to be like <clears throat> no it'll tense up and it, its muscles are going to flex and it's going to fight you and it's going to buck back so again you know something else to think about Re when it comes to religious spirits because i talk about this with my friend david all the time like goats are very stubborn amen that's exactly correct stubborn goats are very stubborn goats are proud stubborn think they know better whatever it is i found that I don't waste my time in that environment. I will just mute, block, on to the next one. I'll give you a great example. People will come in here and a religious spirit will twist the word of God and attack you for doing the very things Jesus told us to do. He commanded us to do deliverance. Yes, he did. We are to walk as though he walked. And um, someone said, let people on. 
let people on. I don't know who's trying to come on. Are, are you trying to come on? Orcadilly547. Another thing is, is people come in here if they want to debate. If people want to debate scripture and fight and argue, I don't do that. So I just nope. block, I block those people because I walk in the spirit. I don't I don't fulfill the I'm not a carnal Christian. I'm not going to walk and fulfill the lust of the flesh, which is backbiting and, and arguing and, and getting angry and gossiping. And I don't need you. To, I don't need to debate scripture with people, guys. I've met Jesus. I know Jesus. You know what I mean? Does Jesus know you? God loves everybody here, but I'm here to tell you the truth. I have met Jesus Christ more than one time, glory to God, but you need to know Jesus Christ for yourself, which means you need a prayerful relationship. I'll bring you on here. You want to share with? Okay, I'll bring you on. Um, follow, I'm following you. Um, what's a spirit spouse? When you have a husband spirit or a spirit, what's that? A spirit spouse that says he's my husband and father? A spirit spouse. Let me see. I'll just let this lady on. Um. um I'll bring her on and then I'll bring the other person on in just a second. A spirit spouse, I guess, is someone you've had a sexual relationship with technically. Hello. Okay. Hello, Mommy. How are you? They are. Okay. I want to share. I want to share. Um, it happened recently uh, this week. I was live with our sister in Christ. You know, um, Sister Grace, Rose Grace, Rose Grace. I've seen her name. I've seen her name, but I have never actually uh, met her. I don't. I don't know if I've ever met her or talked to her. I've seen her name, Rose Grace. She's our sister in Christ. I know her since last year until this year, and this week, around this week, um, um. How to say, uh, mm. I found Singapore and Singapore. I know this sister and, and one of your moderators in the, wow. in the chat, I also, also know them. So this is what happened. I was in, in her life and suddenly my, sis, my sister phone this phone, suddenly um, out of the life and I, I said, huh? But like this. So after that, I come back to her life. And this minute, you know what happened? I was broke. Like I uh, got the feeling uh, something want to put the curse on uh, the blame or the curse on both of us. Eh? And and I suspect uh, this one is no good one. Eh? And my guess is correct. Eh? And 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 after that, I, I, I tell to Brother Charles. So God bring, bring Brother Charles into my life and he helped me a lot. And, and after that, um, I messaged to um, C-L-A, C-L-A-R-E. I think you, you guys know her. So I, I, I tell her, say, please ask. Uh, Sister Rose to bring me back on. I said, wow. I said, I was blocked from her, from her, from her planning and not, uh, not only I, the only one. Eh. Others also being blocked from her. Then, then she told me, said, don't worry. Trust, trust God. I also trust, the only person I will trust is Jesus. Because, He's our good father, good friend, like. And, and after that, uh, like yesterday, uh, you pray for, you pray for uh, who, you pray for uh, Michelle, like. I say, eh, thank you, thank you, God. He's our brother, he cried, say, whoever, uh, uh, we are not, we are not, Invite you here, uh, Satan. Get lost in the name of Jesus. You have no power over my brother or my sister in Christ. Out now. Your time is up right now. And you felt the demon and, come out? Finally. Yes. I command, command all these evil spirits to live in the name of Jesus. You have no right to come here. 
Yeah, I didn't believe that I was so angry. You think you will get away? You will never get away. I remember what you done to me. You think I'm going to worship you? I will never worship you. Out now, out Satan. We hate you. So when I was oh. casting out demons, did you feel something break off and leave yes, you? Lord, I pray you will bless uh, our brother in Christ. Um, uh, when you. he really, really stressed, fill him with your strength and Thank guide you, him with all evil and and uh, Angel Gabriel, Angel Michael. I know you are watching. Uh, keep him close to you. And uh, no, I, you are so beautiful, beautiful Jesus. I love you. You are my savior, my lord, and my best friend. Thank you, Jesus. The only, Praise the, the Lord. Only one thing, the <laughs> only one thing I thank Satan is letting me know that Jesus is real. That is the only one. Other than that, I will never believe him. Mm -hmm. And. Jesus, you are so beautiful. Jesus and, is real. Jesus and is you will bring real. our brother in Christ, our sister in Christ. And, and brother, um, I got one twin sister. Um, can you ask God? Um, is is um is um what's the name of the church? Uh, wow. World Mission Society Church of God is 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 their church um holy or not? I don't know. My, my I've never heard of that church, so I don't know. Um, I'm part of Warrior Notes. I'll put it in the chat. The, uh, the church I'm a part of. Um, so I'm part of Warrior Notes School of Ministry. If only Brother Chang is here, uh, because his his TikTok name is called um. Wide open. Then go uh, our another brother in Christ, brother John, uh, disciple John, and you know Johnny, Johnny the kid, brother uh, Sean. I watch John Ramirez, and then I also watch Isaiah uh, Saldivar. We got one, one son, one, uh, one son, uh, taekwondo, uh, learning taekwondo. What's it? I'm not sure who that is, but what I what I would do if you're looking for a good church, I would ask the Lord to lead me to the right place. And that's so I prayed for the right church and basically the Lord led me Oh, I go into the right church. Yeah. For me, I go to the church name called City Harvest Church of uh Suntech, Singapore. You can go to face I my Facebook was hacked in it. This is the time um my Facebook someone because I want to change the password, I said oh no ma, I cannot log in and I see the email wow already hacking already so I only can use the talk and WhatsApp. And then okay. God, uh, Lord, I, I pray you you feel them, you guide them, you bless them. And, you too. And uh, you deserve the glory, Lord. You are so beautiful. All and glory to God. This is Hong Kong, Isun, Singapore. We'll have a oh, it's beautiful. That's Singapore. I want to see. Show me the show me the yeah. street. I want to. I've never seen Singapore. I want to see. Is it? It's nighttime right now. What's up? Uh, morning. Morning. Okay. Morning. morning time. Okay. Uh, almost three o'clock. Well, thank you for thank you for coming on here, and I I just pray in the name of Jesus that you will have a blessed day life, and have a prosperous day, and that the Holy Spirit will be with you in everything that you do, and you're more than welcome here anytime. Amen. Amen. I love you, brother. Love you too, sister in Christ. You have a blessed afternoon. <laughs> God bless you. Welcome. Wow. Or or is it Orchid? Yes. Orchid? Yes, Orchid. Yes, Orchid. Orchid. Well, God are you bless hearing you. me? Good morning. Good afternoon. Are you, are, are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. So um 
I come on here because you know, uh, when people are talking about Jesus, that is one of my favorite topics. And um, I will join in if I see it makes sense, right? Um, a lot of people, I realize that there's a lot of witch, a lot of witches and warlocks is on with TikTok. Yes, and that's true. there's a lot of witches and warlocks. I real, I saw, I see it for myself, and. There, there's one, I used to come on here and pray, but I realized that if God doesn't lead me to do it, I shouldn't do it because I have to, like, a, it's like a spiritual battle. They, I come on, I come, I come on here, here and pray before and I came under attack. Hmm. And I have to be casting demons, demons, I've been casting demons out of my house. Anyways, the reason why I came on here, I want to have a testimony because, um, I realize that there's a, there are some people on here like I I I joined as a, a group not joined a group but I I came on here one time and I was like talking to a group of people I don't know if they were Muslim or who it was but he, this guy is on here every day and this guy is telling me that they want to tell me that Jesus is just a prophet and Jesus is not God but I have experienced Jesus for myself and I've encountered him for myself. So I'm going to tell you about, about the encounter that I got from, yes. from I had an encounter, more than one encounter. Okay. Um, like uh, many years ago, about maybe some 15 years ago, I had this stomach, stomach issue, right? Yes. And um, I'm always asking God, I said, God, I have a burning stomach indigestion. I, I have this stomach issue and I wanted you to heal me from it. And it got so bad because I was living in Jamaica and it got so bad till when I came to the US, it's like it's still happening to me. And everything I eat, my stomach burns, my stomach hurts, and it just getting worse and worse. And I remember one day I can't hear myself. Why is it that I can't hear myself? Did you turn? What? Are you on, what? Do you have I... headphones on? No. And you can hear yourself? But before I could hear myself. Oh, you have to turn your reverb settings. So for me, I hear myself because I have reverb turned on. So my own voice comes through my speaker. I can hear you fine. I can hear you perfect. You sound perfectly okay. clear to me. Yeah. Okay. So um, for me, so one day I went to the, see. I was like at CNA class. Like I used to do CNA, so I was at the, I go in the class. So I. I was I was hungry, so they they ordered some pepper wings, right? And I ate the pepper wings, and I said, "Lord, I don't want this to burn my stomach because I know it's gonna hurt my stomach." When I came home in the night, it's like I felt of so much discomfort in my stomach, and it was like you know. But before that, I'm gonna tell you what happened before that. Okay. I had this lady. Um, she was a Jehovah Witness. And she was trying to tell me that Jesus is not God. Jesus is just, um, uh, just, just he gets all the powers from God. And I know that Jesus was with God before the foundation of the earth. John 1, 1 tell me that Jesus was with God before the foundation of the earth. So Jesus is not just the, a prophet. Jesus is, Jesus is, is, is God the son, right? He has, he, has all, he has all the powers before a long time ago, before, when he was he, he with the father. So I know all of that. So he makes me know who he is by she's telling me that oh he so one day now one day because I was trying I was searching and searching because I said Lord I don't know who you are and I said a prayer I said Lord I want you to show me who you are if you are just if you are the if you are the son of God or if you are God yourself I want you to let me know who you are and I remember I said that prayer and one day when I went to the CNA class now and I start having that in in discomfort in my stomach when I came home. When I came home in the night, it's like my stomach, I started having bleeding in my stomach. When I went to the bathroom, I started having bleeding in my stomach. And I, when I went to bed now and I lay down, I said, my God, there was something so horribly wrong in my stomach. I realized that I've, you know, it was, my stomach was bleeding. So anyway, because it happens before, so I know because I tell you years ago, I was struggling with this thing and I have been admitting the hospital two times for, for bleeding in my stomach before in Jamaica. So I knew that it was happening to me then. So I remember now I, I, I got up and I went back in, when I went to the bathroom, I got up and I went back in the room and I laid on on my back. And out of, I'm going to tell you something that's going to stun you. Out of nowhere, I felt this power came over the room. I couldn't move. This power came over the room. 
And when I look, I saw two hands. And I saw these two hands coming towards me. I was so scared when I, when I saw the two hands. I was scared at first. But when I recognized the two hands, it was Jesus' two hands. <laughs> and when I see it, when he sees that I saw in I realized like realized, he paused. When he see that he, he, he scared me, and he paused, and then when he paused, and then he, he keeps, you know, when he hold, you know, when he holds up the two hands like that and putting it towards me. Praise the Lord. And when he saw when he saw that I was scared and he paused, he didn't disappear, he didn't take away his two hands, he paused. And when I said, Oh, it's Jesus, I said, Oh, it's Jesus. Oh, then wow. he came and he bring down his two hands on my stomach. When he bring down he to, his two hands on my stomach, this, the atmosphere in the room was so, so powerful. I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. I couldn't do anything. I'm telling wow. you. <laughs> when, the two hands, when the two hands disappeared, when the two hands disappeared, I still couldn't move because it takes me moments in the room to move. And wow. I said to my husband, I said to my husband, I said, my husband, did you feel that? Did you feel that power? He says he felt a breeze come around him, but he didn't know what it was. I said, I just saw Jesus' hands. I started to cry. I started to cry. I called my friend in New York. I said, Miss Gwen, I said, you know what just happened to me? I saw something. I needed to believe me what I'm going to tell you. I just saw Jesus' hands. And it's, he's not white. Jesus is not white. Yeah. He has this. He has the, you know, the color that Italians have, those, it, the color like in between white and black, like this, just this, I don't know, the most two beautiful hands I've ever seen. Yeah, his, hand, his skin is very dark. I've, I've seen Jesus a couple of times. He is not times. white. He is not white. People, yeah. Jesus is not white. I want you guys to understand this. He's yeah. not a white man. He has very dark skin. When, He's, he's, yeah, darkish, very like, dark little skin. bit darkish. <laughs> little bit darkish. Very so darkish. anyway. <laughs> Anyways, when no, when no, you know what? He says the same thing. He said, People, you know, he's not, he's white, not a white man. He he's not a he white man. Pale. He's not pale or pasty. No, he's, he's not a dark. pale man. He's not pale. He's not pale. No, he's not pale like the regular white. He's nothing like that. That's correct. But when he sees that I see you no know, one, I said, Oh my God, oh my God, I started to cry because I didn't know what to do. What to do. I said, God, you really came and helped me. So, anyways. Wow. You know when you're getting, you know when you're getting a healing, right? And then yeah. I went back to the toilet and I started passing out stuff. I started passing out blood and all that kind of stuff. So wow. all that what was in me, I'm passing it out. So anyway, I end up to the end. You're gonna hear this part. I end up at the emergency room. So I said to them, I have a bleeding in my stomach. When they take me to the to the the the, 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 the X-ray, the X-ray machine, and to X-ray me and to get to to see down in my stomach and anything, they come back and tell me, "You, I don't see anything wrong with your stomach. Nothing is wrong with your stomach." Remember, I had this two times before, you know, so I knew something is happening to me, and I'm passing out all that blood, right? Yeah. When they take me to the the, the 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 machine and they took me under the there and to 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 see what's going on in my stomach, they said nothing is wrong with your stomach. We don't see any bleeding. We don't see any ulcer in your stomach. Praise the and Lord. We, uh, yes. So I'm Thank gonna you tell Jesus. you now that what happened to me now after that, <laughs> I realized that everything I eat now, I could eat jalapeno pepper. I could eat anything, any fried food. I could eat anything I want, and nothing happened to me after that. Nothing happened to me after that. Glory. Jesus wow. healed my stomach. He healed me. And I can tell you, I, I, I more, many more healing that he, did, he have done to me. So he is real. You have yes. to, uh, if you get an encounter for yourself, if you don't know if Jesus is real, you need to say, I need to say a prayer. If you really want to know who he is, you have to seek him and you'll find it. I will come and let you know who he is because yes. don't listen to other people that say Jesus. And Jesus has power. There's power in the name of Jesus yes. of Nazareth. Yes. I'm telling you, people believe Jesus is, is, is awesome. He's real. If you don't understand who he is, and when you're going to understand who he is, is when you seek him and you find him and then he's going to come to you and he's going to make him, he's going to reveal himself. He's going to manifest him words upon your life. He's going to make you know who he is because um, it's a thing that he does to me and what he, the encounter I got letting me, let me know who God is. And I can tell you so many more, but I'm not going to keep up the life. The life. I want to get no, somebody else to come on. Testify. It's yours. I would, I would I can rather tell you one time you. again. In, yeah, keep keep I, talking. When, I want you to. Please. In, 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 in 1996, I was, I was going to school. And I was in I was high school. And um, 
I was always going to Sunday school. Like that's how, how I learned about Jesus. But I never get the encounter with Jesus until when I was in high school and um I, I had sickle cell anemia, right? And yes. I got a I got a I got a I got a, I got a stroke. I um it's called meningitis, something called meningitis. I was home one day and I felt this big, big rock come and hit me in my head like a big rock. It's just like a pain. It's a pain, but it's like a big rock hit me in my head. And as I fell on the ground, I started vomiting, I started with all these things, and my mom wait, didn't take me to the hospital at the same time. She waited until in the evening because she didn't have any money. She said she didn't have any money to take me to the hospital. So she waited it until the evening. And when the evening, when she took me to the hospital in the evening now, um, they told her I have meningitis. And I was in the hospital for, for weeks, every day with pain in my head. Pain 24 hours of the day, uncontrollable pain in my head. And one day, a lady came to my bedside and said to me, do you believe in Jesus? And I told her, yes, I heard about him in Sunday school. And she gave me a bottle of olive oil and said, whenever you feel the, you feel the pain, call upon Jesus and tell Jesus to heal you. Ask him to heal you. Anyways, I did what the lady told me to do, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember I said a prayer to God. I said, Jesus, if you heal me, I'm going to serve you. Remember that, that time I was just 16 years old. I was just 16 years old. I was in 10th grade and going to high school in 10th grade. I said, God, if you, if you heal me, I'm going to serve you. Huh. I remember I told God that. He took and it remember, and he heard your prayer. Yes. Amen. I remember, I remember once, I remember um, every single day, because no matter what, no matter what the medication they were giving me weren't working. I had, I had, I had, I had my, my, my brain was bleeding. My bread, blood vessels was bleeding. I have double vision. I, um, I have having seizures. I have in all of that was going on with me, right? Yes. And at one point, when I look at you, I walk at, when I look at someone, I'm seeing three persons at a time. And it's not three persons, only one person. But that's what the double vision do, does to me. And I remember when I tell God the prayer, I tell God, I said that to God. I said, God, I, 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 I just said to him, I said, make a bargain with, with him. And I said, I'm going to serve you if, he, if you heal me. And I remember the third week. I could, I could, I could, the pain went, the pain went, subside, the pain just go, went, went away, went away. And there was just a light, little bit of tiny pain was there. I was completely healing my, until they moved me from the front of the hospital and bring me to the back of the hospital. And that's when I know what he was getting better. Cause the doctor said, oh, you're getting better. You're even reading. I was even reading. I'm testifying people because you need to know who Jesus is. Yes. Jesus yes. is not just a prophet. Jesus is God. He's he has all the power to do everything. I need to yes. know the people to know these things. When yes. you're going through anything, pray to God and he'll answer you. Call upon Jesus and he'll yes. answer you. I'm telling you. You yes. see? When? Yes. They yes. move me to the back yes. of the hospital. Yes. Yes. When they move me to the back of the hospital. And, and, and they see now I was going home. The, the doctor came and he started to, to smile and he started to dance because I was so sick. They thought I was going to die. I was so sick. But God healed me. He healed me. He helped me. And, he, I, and I end up go, went home and could go back to school. Before I could leave the hospital, I said to the doctor, will my eyes come back to normal? Because remember, my eyes are not normal. My, I have double vision. One of the my eyes got, it got it shift over to the, the corner. So I couldn't see properly. And my eyes came right back to normal. If you look at my eyes now, you couldn't tell that my eyes was messed up. It come right back to normal. Right. So I'm saying oh, there's a lot of things I can testify about what Jesus God has done for me. And that's what made me believe in God, because his <laughs> work said it for him. He works do it for him. He just does. I just don't say the name, but his work, you do what he should must do. He's yeah. faithful. He's faithful. Yeah. And even when we are not faithful to him, he's faithful to us. You just yeah. we have to just believe. Yes. So I can tell you so many more testimonies I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you so much more. That's why I say I have to praise God. Praise I have God. to I have to worship him. I have to believe in him for the rest of my life. I will praise this man called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise I will God. praise him for the rest of my life. Even Amen. when I'm fall down, I'm going to get up back and I'm going to go again because God Thank is you. God. Yes. You understand me? Yes. So when people come on here and telling me about Jesus is just a prophet, they don't know what they're talking about.
They don't have, they right. haven't had any encounter. They haven't know what when God have done so many things for you, and when you're sick and He helped you and He healed you, then you can say that you know because they can't convince me any otherwise because I have sought for my own eyes. I use my own eyes to see His two hands. He showed me His two hands with my own eyes. I saw it. I wasn't dreaming. I saw those two hands, and He's not a black man. He's not yeah. a white man, sorry. Yeah, man. Amen. Amen. That's me? true. I've I've seen and that too. Those yeah. are the most two beautiful hands I've ever seen. Beautiful, Praise perfect. God. Perfect. Praise the Lord. Perfect. So he's real people. Not because you see all these things happening in the world right now and said to Jesus is not real. He's real. Remember when he when when Jesus when when on the, the Lucifer left heaven, one third of God angels came down with him. And those are fallen angels. Those are those the angels, those angels become become demon, demons. So when you see people do act in certain way, they are demonic possessed. Yep. And it's because of Lucifer and his and his and his and his um his followers. Yeah, he's definitely you know, so people don't and if let, let me tell you something. You see, if people don't believe, you can't explain the spiritual stuff to them because they won't understand. You under, have to understand God to to, to 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 um to speak the spiritual stuff with people, then they'll understand. Then people unbelievers won't understand the spiritual things. They don't Perfect. understand anything about the spiritual things. So it's a waste of time to be speaking the spiritual things with them. Mm-hmm. Even the believers too. Some of them don't have enough faith. They don't believe. They don't believe in some spiritual things. That's true. You understand? Because there, there's carnal people. If you're carnally minded, you won't discern spiritual things. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. You have to be born again. So yes. Kevin Zadai teaches on that. That there there are people that teach. They can teach the Bible. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you won't have any understanding. You'll have very little understanding at all if you're not born again. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you've never um, received the Holy Spirit, spoke in new tongues, you got to speak in tongues, guys. You have to have received the Holy Spirit and, and, and speak in new tongues. Ask Holy Spirit to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And ask, ask pray and ask Jesus Christ for your what? heavenly prayer language because, yes, yeah. he's very real. And without the Holy Spirit, this book won't make a lot of sense. People can only go so far if you don't, if you're not born again, you're, you're carnal. Galatians chapter okay. five talks about that. You cannot please God in the flesh. You God is a spirit, and you have to worship God in spirit and in truth. So, well, speaking in tongues is just the evidence of, of you being filling with the Holy Spirit. Speaking yeah. in tongues is just the evidence. It's just the evidence because yeah. um yeah, the Bible also told us that speak, um, you can speak in tongues and yet still, you uh, cause I mean, there's more than one spiritual gift. You are speaking yeah. in tongues. You have love and you have, you have um, oh prophecy, my God, prophecy, discernment, discernment. Yeah. You have you have uh charity. You have love and charity. You have yeah. all of those things all together. You are yeah. not with teaching, they say it's all one. teaching. Yeah. yeah, so it's more than one, more than one different. Everybody's not gonna get the same gift. Mm -hmm. everybody's not going to get the same gift. Right. Yeah. There's because... So pretty much Kevin Zadai teaches on this pretty good. And it's it, it, the, the Holy Spirit gives gifts severally as the Holy Spirit is willing. So pretty much everybody has like at least three gifts from what I understand. Yeah. So everybody has at least three gifts. And Paul said, I seek that you would all prophesy. He said, I desire yeah. above all else that you would seek to prophesy. So, I asked the Lord to give me the gift of prophecy, how to interpret my tongues. And, and, and the Lord has answered my prayers. I interpret my tongues. I, I hear from the Lord. I receive prophetic dreams and visions. Um, me too. In Mark 16, 17, it says, All who believe in my name will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new tongues. Yeah. And yeah. I have the, the dream. I have the, I, have the, I have the gift of the vision and discernment. Yeah. Um, the other day, the other, even when my mom died, the Lord showed me everything before she died, months before she died. And I denied and I said, Lord, you're not going to show me my mother in a coffin. And, 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 and you're not going to show me my mother in a coffin. She showed me my, my mother in a, in a white coffin, in a white dress. And I said, God, no, God, no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And when my mom died, she, bar she buried in a white coffin and a white dress. Right. 
She, wow. she, I denied the whole thing until when, when she, you know, when she died and I started to cry. Two days after, you reminded me of the dream. And I said, yes, I was warning you a long time ago, but you never believe me. Right. So there's so many. Um, the other day I was in here. Right. Because uh, in Oregon, it rains a lot. And the breeze start blowing. The breeze start blowing because you have some broken branches sometimes and it will fall. So anyway, I was in here one night and uh, we just bought we just bought this rough for so uh we park it on our, our at our regular spot. Before that, we, it got damaged before uh, our, our car before we had that got damaged from the, the breeze and the branches got got um thrown down. So I just was just in here one night and I saw the breeze just blowing regular. I said like I said to uh, like something said to me like you need to go move your vehicle. So I said, no, you know, I was trying kind of ignoring it a little bit. And then it says to me, you need to go ignore your, uh, go, go move your vehicle, you know? And it's all like my spirit was bothered the whole time. So I said to my husband, can you go move the vehicle from underneath the tree and park it somewhere else? He was just, he just came out, came from outside with the, from, with the dog and it was raining and it was cold. So he didn't go back out there. So the whole night I was just bothered. Anyway, I went to bed and I got up, uh, I heard my dead stepfather calling me and calling me very loud, like something was happening. And when he called me, I said, and I wake up, jump out of my sleep. So I said, what was going on? So anyway, I went outside and I looked, the vehicle was still there. Nothing was wrong with it yet. Nothing was wrong with it yet. I came back in and I take up the phone. I was talking to one of my girlfriends in Baltimore. Then all of a sudden, about what, five minutes in the phone call, I heard my neighbor knocking on my door telling me that I should come now because there's a big branch fell down on the vehicle uh, mash out the, the moon roof mash out the moon roof and I need it, to come and, and I, yeah what happened to the moon roof a big a big um, branch fell down on the vehicle and mash out the moon roof break so out broke, the moon roof broke the glass broke out the glass mash it up man mash up the whole top and I said to myself, I said, look at that. He, I got warned last night to move it, and I didn't move it. So I wasn't obedient. I wasn't obedient at the time when I was supposed to be obedient. Sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks to you, us, and we don't be obedient. And we get, you know, we just get, get into trouble. That's true. Yeah, a branch fell on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if I, I, if I, if I so you had a rock hit you in the head, and you had a branch fall in the car. No, a rock didn't hit me in my head. No. Oh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. I thought the rock had hit you in the head a long time ago. Okay, I missed it. No, no, no. I no. The, uh, when I was telling you about what happened, I felt like a big rock hit me in, a head, in my head. But it was the pain. The pain. Oh, I'm pain. describing how hard the pain was. Okay. Yeah, I I'm, I'm now. describing how hard the pain was. Yeah, it wasn't a real rock. But I'm not describing how that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So, I mean... I mean, the Lord, the, sometimes um, the Holy Spirit will tell me things and I, I like I ignore. I'm not sure if it's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. But when yeah. something when it's when it ha something happened now, then I realized it was really the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Because yeah, the night true. before I got warned to move the vehicle and I didn't move it. The Holy Spirit told me to move it, move the vehicle. Something's going to happen. And I didn't move it. And, and that's what happened the, the next wow. morning. Wow. God is good. And he's always looking out for us. I can yeah. tell you something that happened to me one day. So mm. when I first started hearing from the Lord, I heard, I, I started hearing Holy Spirit speaking inside of me, like speaking to my mm. heart. And he yeah. was like, going, he was like going to walk. I was like, I was like, oh, okay. And then I went on a walk and then I would bump mm. into someone and I would just be like, out of nowhere, like Jesus loves you. And they would look at me and be like, how I was just talking about Jesus. And like, now I'm giving them my testimony and they're like in tears and that happened oh. one day. So the Holy spirit can move you to go help somebody that you never even knew would be there on a walk. And like, it's true. I just want to tell anyone here, if you hear, if you hear that still small voice and he's like, Hey, go on a walk or jog or whatever, just go and don't worry about it. Just obey because you don't just even do know it. what could happen. You could meet somebody that's going to give you a business. You just don't know. Someone could be on their last leg, could be about to take their own life. And because you spoke yep. a word to them, yep. now you just changed their destiny forever. One time there was a guy on a motorcycle and I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, 
you're going to go witness to that man. And I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. He had six, six, six tattooed on his motorcycle. Oh. He was a gang member. I had to follow oh, my man into a tattoo studio. Oh my goodness. Members. And then I had to walk into the tattoo studio, stu- to tattoo studio and tell the man, touch not mine anointed and do my profits no harm. That was the message I had to give to the man in the, in the motorcycle gang with the gang members all around. They all looked at me like they wanted to kill me. All their demons began manifesting. However, God protected me. No one was able to touch me, and I walked out of there completely untouched. And these men were in a violent biker gang, a, not a good gang. Jesus. See? Amen. Wow. Amen. So God will protect you. Even if you end up in a war zone, it doesn't matter what country you're in. I don't care how many witches, how many warlocks, how many Freemasons have tried to take my life or curse me. God continues to protect me. His love is, it, 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 nothing can separate us from God's love. I'm here to tell you guys, God is faithful and he will continue to protect you. So all he asks us to do is be obedient. We yes, yes, Jesus yes, said, if yes. you love me, you will obey me. So, I'm going to tell you say something. You know what I understand? Sorry, to, to, I didn't want to cut you. Sorry. No, please do. You're good. You know what I understand as believers? The more, the more, the more I pray is the more I come under attack. The more oh, I pray, yeah. the more I come under attack. And as believers, we come under attack 24 sevens of the day. 20, I mean, it's like you got the constant praying. And even when you come and pray, you come under attack. The devil doesn't like it. So he makes, he, 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 he puts on, a, we, we go under so much difficulties. So many difficulties we have to go under. And each day we have to, pr- we have to just pray and ask God for strength. Amen. We and had, I, go ahead. Go ahead. And I find, I find out with myself that whenever I pray and I come in and attack uh, all the time, it's like I slow down on my prayers because I'm scared of the attack and I shouldn't be do that. I shouldn't do that. You know, I should continue to pray, you yeah. know? Yeah. 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 Well, we haven't been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power and a sound mind. And, and what I've learned is, is that perfect love casts out all fear. So if, if you're feeling any kind of fear that's not from God, we need to get in his presence. Seek the Lord. I wake up every morning and all I want to do is just cast demons out of people now. All I want to yeah. do is cast the demons out of people, cast demons out of witches, cast the demons out of the warlocks. I but, just want to make myself available to cast demons out of people so they can receive the same deliverance from Jesus that he gave me so freely. And he talks about it in Matthew chapter 10, yeah. he talks about, you know, in verse 8, he actually says, um, as freely you have received, freely you shall give the deliverance I've given you. So I just believe in, in, in giving people deliverance and I, it's been an honor and a blessing just to be able to pray for people and to be able to cast the demons out of people. Because once the people see the demons coming out of their body, they're like, whoa, that's real. Now I know there's demons everywhere. So now I'm going to want to go do that and set other people free. And no. then you can do the greater works of Jesus. Any believer that's filled with the Holy Spirit can cast the demons out of others. You just got to make sure you don't have any demons first. You know, you can't have demons. Right. <laughs> Hours, but Amen. when you do that, make sure you consecrate yourself though after because uh do, make sure you cover yourself after though yeah because you come under attack you don't know when you're going to come under attack but you will come under attack i'm telling you so you have to cover yourself yeah i just pray I've every people, day I've people, praying, I've people praying for you and use the consecrated olive oil to cover it to, to you put on yourself too yeah yeah we have anointing oil in my home and um you know, I've seen stuff in dreams. I, I know, the, like, so Satan has no new tactics. I'll say that. There's nothing new under the sun. We, so we used to have witches and warlocks show up to our house before I went through deliverance. Now I, now that I do deliverance, they don't want to come near me. They, the wow. witches won't even come in my neighborhood now. I mean, I have hmm. a very powerful anointing on my life from Jesus. He, God doesn't let these people touch me, but the, the Freemasons, the Warlocks, they used to try to run me off the road and take my life at one point. The, it, it was really out of hand. But what I found is it says in Proverbs 26, verse 2, that an undeserved curse cannot land, but it will flutter over you like a sparrow. So if you're not living in sin and there's nothing the devil has to, to hook you with, then, then they can't. There's no fear. <laughs> there's no fear in perfect love. I have no fear in my life at all. I don't fear demonic attacks. I actually cast the demons out of everybody that comes on here. Anyone that has yeah. demons, if they want to come on here, come on. I'll cast them out. 
If someone was in the Freemasons, they need to renounce Freemasonry in Jesus' name. Freemasons have a lot of generational curses because oh, when, yeah. they, when they join the Freemasons, they make a word spell. They do satanic ritual abuse. Just like when people join a sorority or a fraternity, what happens is, is they, do, they do a humiliation ritual. That's why they make you strip naked to join a fraternity or a sorority. Freemasons have to say spells with words, and they have to say things like, let my firstborn son be cursed if he doesn't become a Freemason. And they speak generational curses over their own bloodline in exchange wow. to join the Freemasons so they can make more money or whatever. Yep, yep, yep. And they curse their family. So mm -hmm. a lot of people that are sick all the time or they're like, oh, I don't, I have all these problems. It's because the Freemasons. There's, that's why you got sickness in your body and children are being born sick because the Freemasons speak curses over their relatives. Yeah. People don't even know this about the Freemasons. The Freemasons do witchcraft at the highest level. They sacrifice. They, they do. do. Sacrifice. And, you know, here's another thing. What about, like, the Knights of Columbus or the Shrine Circus and them? They're, they're that, too, I, it was to my understanding. Same thing. They're all part of the Masonic, it, different lodges and stuff like that. It's really deep. If you if you research masonry and stuff, it's really deep. Like they all interconnect and it goes back to like the G logo, the G in the middle of their little pyramid compass thing. It stands for Gilgamesh. And oh. it goes back to Nimrod, who knew who Nimrod when Nimrod ran away from God and uh it's really wild, but Gilgamesh was actually one of the mighty ones. He was a Nephilim. He wasn't fully human. And Kevin Zadai taught about this. Yeah, Shriners and Freemasons do good works, but it, okay, you know, that's that they, they cover up what they're doing by showing you the good works that they do over here, but don't look over there. So mm -hmm. they, they, use, they, use a, they use a child on a commercial. Yeah. You know, for the cancer center or, you know, so forth. Yep. That's what they do. So Kevin Zadai, about a week ago, two weeks ago, he was teaching them about the pyramids, why they were really built. The pyramids were built. So the, the, the Nephilims that were here right after the flood, they were afraid God was going to flood the world again, just like it happened in Genesis for their sexual sin and everything. So the Nephilim had escape hatches in the pyramids. That's why there's those big giant cinder blocks and doors where they could run and get to the top of that cap on top of the pyramid. And the, and the way they strategically be, built pyramids all over the world was so that they would be just higher than the floodwaters because they measured where the floodwaters had gone up to in the mountains. So if you calculate the medium value of any pyramid anywhere in the world, it's over a specific certain point on every mountain range, which is exactly where the floodwaters breached when God sent the flood. So the reason the pyramids were really built originally was for the Nephilim to run up to the top and they were they could hide. It's really, really wild if you study that stuff. And, and like I said, wow. Kevin Zadai teaches on that. Like to get into the Nephilim and Gilgamesh and Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, the stuff that was going on in the days of Noah, just how it will be at the end of the world right before the Son of Man returns. I mean, it is like mind blowing to get into that. And I'm not like the expert. I'm just quoting what Kevin was teaching. And I was like, no wonder there's pyramids in the jungle. And in Texas, there's buried pyramids. They've hid them under things. And why are there pyramids places and they're hiding them? Why do they hide the bones of giants, all the dead giants in the Smithsonian? Because they don't want to admit that there was Nephilim. Yep. Wild stuff. Very. Just food for thought. Mm -hmm. Someone said, what are the free classes you can take? Go to Warrior Note School of Ministry dot com. Heavenly Visitations a free class. It's still on there. I'm looking right now. I'm gonna um, take the classes. Yeah, it's a free course. Day excuse me, Days of Heaven on Earth. Days of Heaven on Earth level one is a free class. You can take that one on your computer or even on your phone. I think it will work. Someone said aliens are demons. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Some people would say they're Nephilim. I personally believe what Kevin Zadai says, that the Nephilim are chained under the Euphrates. There is scripture that can confirm that, that the, the, the fallen ones, the fallen angels that were kicked out of heaven with Lucifer and Luke 10, 18, they're actually bound. They're confined within the earth. So I believe they could be likely under the, the Euphrates River. <clears throat> Kevin Zadai. Yeah, that's the correct spelling. Give me one second. I'm going to make a cup of coffee. I'm going to be right back. 
Yeah. Wow. Learn so, learn. so Orchid, what a powerful testimony that you've been through. I mean, and today yeah. I went through some, this morning, I went through deliverance. It took a couple hours to get the demons out of me because I was so demonically opp oppressed. And yes, wow. I live for the Lord and I, and I've been saved, but I've been under such spiritual attack that these demons had attached to me. And I mean, it took like two, two and a half hours to get these demons out of me this morning. And I'm still laying in bed. I've been puking and throwing up and burping and it's coming yeah, out of me in every which way you can think of. That is but definitely yeah, a deliverance. deliverance. Yeah. When you see you, you vomiting and all of that, that's del deliverance coming. Yes. And so between that and being on the toilet and burping and coughing and spitting up, it's, I'm still being delivered and it's, it's two 30. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm just taking it. the time to be set free from these strongholds that were on me. There was such demonic oppression that, I mean, I'm so glad that Ashton took the time to do deliverance session on me this morning. I come on the attack all the time. Even when I was li living in Idaho, I mean, it's like every 12 o'clock in the night, I could feel something coming over me and my husband. One of the time, my husband had to get up and sleep in the city. And it was so much. It's, uh, it's like one of my church sisters called me one, one day. And we used to talk, we used to pray for this lady um, in the hospital. She have sickle cell anemia just like me, but she was she have it so bad. So every time she go in the hospital, we have to pray for her. So one day I called my church sister and said, "Let us pray for such and such, right?" And then she starts right. speaking in tongues. She started speaking in tongues that day. Started speaking in tongues. She said, "No, no, 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 no. I need to speak talk. I need to I need to uh, pray for you. You I need to pray for not my this lady." And she started telling me some stuff that, that, that only me know. And, you know, she's telling me that I'm telling too much people, telling this lady my business. And this lady is doing things. This lady is sending demons to me, on me. And, you know, a lot of things that, and she described the girl too. And I said, oh my God, but this is how the Holy Spirit was telling me that she was doing it. But I was like, no, she wouldn't do that to me, you know. And when the lady finished praying for me and everything is like, Everything just so different. My house becomes so different. My husband could sleep better. I could sleep better. I don't feel it anymore. No, it, um, I was up. I was up most of the night last night, so I haven't slept much at all. And um, but I, I just really believe that tonight, as I lay my head down, I'm going to be just at perfect peace and rest, and my sleep will be sweet. Hmm. Whoa, I've pretty much been say, up all night and all day. Say I got into a relationship with a, with a mason and then I started studying about it. Now, wow, I ran. Yeah, you need to pray about it too and ask God not to let those demons attack you because since you're with him, demons would attack you. Depends sometimes when you sleep with someone and they have demons on them, it, it transfers to you, the person, the, 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 the partner. You know, so yep. we have to be careful of that who, who you sleep with and who you, you, yeah, because I'm telling you, whenever the demons is in an other person, it will transfer to you if you're not strong enough. That is correct. I learned that. Trust me, I learned that. When I, when I just got married to my husband too, he had, he had demons. He had some demons because he was living a life where, and then had was a cast out a lot of demons out of the house. Wow. So, we have to be careful who we, who, yeah, it's true. It's deep. The spiritual things is, is very deep. It's very deep. Yes. A lot, yes. a lot of people is not going to understand it if they don't, if they don't in it, you know, if you're not, if you're not believer, you're not going to understand this because when you, when you are a believer, the Lord will show you, the spirit will show you, the Holy, the Holy Spirit will teach you things and it will show you things. As, as, if you understand what I mean. A, a lot of times I'm here and I'm going through something and the Holy Spirit give me the scripture to read and give me the exact scripture to go with the situation. That's good. I heard what you said. I was in my kitchen. Yeah. I was listening. You said people that have sex. You're right. You can have yeah. a very real a, tr a, a transference of spirits can occur because when people... Are, are intimate like that you're mm -hmm. creating like a soul tie and you're so closely intertwined mm -hmm. it's very very much like you become in covenant because in the bible it says how can two yeah. walk together except they be in agreement yeah 
And I wonder, so one of the things, let me grab my dog. They won't stop barking. One second. Come, Bruno, you're coming with me. You're coming with me, big boy. Little brother, go. Arlo, lay down. Be a good boy. Lay down. Um, so what I wonder about is occasionally you'll meet, you'll meet a believer that's married. This is like new territory for me. But I feel yeah. this like um, you'll meet a believer who's Thank married you. to a non-believer I love that connection. And you know in your heart, like yeah. obviously a non-believer is gonna have demons. Like cause because yeah. believers I cast demons out of Christians all the time. And so I'm wondering to myself, like, man, like you'd have to really ah! you'd have to really guard yourself pretty carefully, closely, if you're married to a non-believer. Ah! Ah! Because like what do they because you want to make sure that whatever they're into or, or whatever they're doing, you just don't want any part of that. So Exactly. So the demons, from everything I've seen and I've been taught in, in school and everything I've seen in, in ministry and <laughs> deliverance, is, is that they need a right to be there. They, You've got to be partaking in a form of sin. These demons cannot affect you if there's not active sin in your life. That's right. Like, for instance, I'm not worried about people. Oh, Arlo, here, let me let these dogs out. Come on, come on. Go outside. Go. You go. Both you boys go out. Go out. Come on. You guys are going out. Good boy. So, I'm not Pro worried about other people's demons. I'm protected. Demon free for if you're an atheist, Miss. Uh... You need to pray for God to, 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 to knock on your heart because if you're yeah. an atheist, that means you're not a believer. And yep. and um, there's a God. There is a God. Yep. People who are not saved, people who are not believers, if, if someone is not filled with the Holy Spirit, they cannot, with Kevin Zadai teaches on this, they cannot withstand the enemy. So somebody that's not f filled with the Holy Spirit, any demon can enter into them. They have no protection, basically. They, they completely have no resistance because they don't have spiritual armor. They don't have the sword of the spirit. They don't have anything to stop the, the Satan from possessing them, from taking them over. So that's why it says you have to resist. Uh, you submit your will to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So somebody yeah. that's not even saved, they can't resist the devil because they don't have the armor. No. They don't have the Holy Spirit. Yep. Unless they have somebody praying for them. If they have somebody praying for them, yeah. no, that's different. Yeah, yeah. Someone's praying for you, obviously, they're, that's different. That's entirely different. But, yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with you on that. All right. I yeah. have some, somebody. I have to go on Facebook. At some point here in a few minutes, I have to go do a deliverance. Um, I'm going to check on that. I will be back on later this afternoon, you guys. Thank you for coming on and uh, giving your testimony. You're more than welcome to come back on here um, anytime. I really appreciate you giving your testimony uh, for deliverance. Um, oh, you only have 13 followers. Okay, just send me a message. Uh, contact me on Facebook, Ashton Spink on Facebook, and uh, I can uh, I can bring you on on here on Facebook. So God bless you guys, and I'll be back on soon. I'll see you guys a little bit later tonight. In Jesus' name, have a, have a good day.